Today we're going to discuss Leibniz rule. We'll start with a simple example where you have a function, which is a function of time in x. I'm going to integrate that function with respect to x from limits a to b, and then I want to take the time derivative of that time derivative of that integral. So I'm going to have my function, uh, which is a function of x and t at time t. It looks like this. Uh, some short time later, it shifted a little bit. So time t plus delta t, it's moved. What we mean by taking the time derivative of the integral, so the integral at the initial time, this is our point A and B, is simply the area under the curve. At time t plus delta t, it's going to be that area. So all we need to know is then what's the difference between those and sort of take the limit as delta t goes to zero and that would be our formal definition of the derivative. Uh, so let's do that. But first let's remember that when I have a function at time t plus delta t, I can do a Taylor series, which tells me some short time later I can write that function, which is a function of x and time at the time t, and then I can just take the derivative with respect to time times delta t. That's just a Taylor series approximation to some function some short time later. So let's write out uh, our, our terms here. So we'll integrate from a to b. That gives us the blue shaded area here. We'll integrate the function from a to b at the original time t. That gives us the black shaded area. We'll divide that by delta t. And we'll take the limit as delta t goes to 0. And that will give us the, uh, the, the derivative, exactly what we want. So if we look, we see we have the integral of f from a to b with respect to dx. And we have that term over here. So this guy is going to cancel. That guy's going to cancel. Uh, the delta t's are going to cancel. What we're left with is something we probably could have guessed initially, that I can simply, uh, if my limits of integration are constant, I can simply switch the order of integration and differentiation. So I can move the derivative operator inside the integral. And that's what we also get from this geometric argument of areas. OK, now let's consider a slightly more complicated example. where now my limits of integration a and b are themselves functions of time. So graphically, I have my function at the initial time, and the function has shifted some short time later. But now my limits of integration have also shifted. So my point a is moved from here to here. So this point is now a. This point here is now a plus dA dt times delta t. And our other limit out here, b, our other limit out here, b, becomes b plus dB dt times delta t. So when we're calculating the derivative of this whole thing, where all this stuff is changing with time, so the limits of integration and the function itself, initially we have the black area there. Finally, we have the blue area there, and so it's the difference between those two areas will be related to the derivative of this integral where the limits of integration are in fact shifting. So let's work this out a little more formally. Okay, so let's work this out a little bit more formally. Here I have the value of the integral a short time in the future, so my limit of integration has shifted from a to a plus dA dt times my short distance delta t, likewise for the upper limit of integration, and likewise for my function itself. So I take the difference of the integral in the future minus the current value divided by delta t. So let's expand all these terms out.
So I've just expanded out every single term in my equation. Now I can start looking for stuff that cancels. So immediately I might recognize that this and that, I have a plus and a minus, so I can drop those out. Um, I can look at my delta t is divided by everybody. So that delta t goes away, that delta t goes away, that delta t goes away. <clears throat> and these term, this term and this term then become divided by delta t. Now if I think about taking the limit of this thing as delta t goes to zero, here I have some function, it's derivative, I'm integrating of a domain, that term stays. Here I'm integrating a function over a very small distance from a to basically dA, right? So just a small distance away. So that term is small, but it's divided by delta t. So when I take the limit of delta t going to zero, I need to worry about this term. Likewise for the b term, right? It's exactly the same thing, that term will stay. Here I'm taking uh, some function and I'm integrating it over an infinitesimal domain. So as I take the limit as delta t goes to zero, I'm integrating something from a to a. So that term's gonna go away in the limit, that term's gonna go in the way with the limit. So I'm left with three terms, this guy, this guy, this guy. So let's write those out a little more carefully. Now here with this term right here, let's be careful. So I'm integrating f over a very, very small distance. So in the limit, I can assume that f is just a constant and it's the value of the function evaluated at the point A. And my, then my region of integration is just gonna be, and I have delta t over delta t, so that will cancel, so that will go away. So I have the value of the function evaluated at A times dA dt. So the rate that that limit of integration is changing, and likewise for B. And there we have it. So the time rate of change of an integral whose limits are changing with respect to time, we have to worry about the fact that the function is changing with respect to time, and my two limits of integration are shifting. And this is the formula. Okay, so let's write that out a little neater then. Our final result, we said that d, 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 t. We had three terms. three terms remaining. And we can see what those terms are graphically. So there's our function at time t, our function at time t plus delta t. Here's our original points, our limit, our original limits, uh, a and b. a has moved to there. B has moved to there. This term here will be associated with that area change. This term here will be associated with the value of F evaluated at point A over that little distance. And this term here will be F evaluated over point B times that little distance. And we can see that um, in these, this approximation here, we're kind of not accounting for these corners, but if you think about it, these corners are the product of two small things. So it's this small distance and this small distance, even though I've exaggerated in this picture. So that's like a two small things squared when I take the limit will go away. So here we go, Leibniz rule when the limits of integration are changing.